funny. Everybody uh, seems to think that the Bears have no chance except the Bear players. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can just put it across. It'd be a major upset if they do it. It certainly would be one of the greatest upsets in the history of the NFL. And the Chicago Bears are here in Candlestick to give it a try. For the first time in three years, the Chicago Bears were battling in the postseason. They deserved to be in the playoffs. They had worked hard. They expected to be there all along. It was their goal. In Candlestick against San Francisco, the Bears held a slim early lead and fought desperately to hold on. In the end, their grit was no match for the 49ers glittering galaxy of stars. But it took the best team in the NFL to beat them. This young football team came about as far as it could go in the playoffs and ran up against a steamroller machine in the San Francisco 49ers. We have to remember, this is a team on the way up. They went from 5-11 and 11 to 7-9 and nine last year, went to 10-8 and eight, two playoff games this year, so definitely another huge step in the right direction. It was a year to be proud of, a springboard for the season to come. In 1994, the Bears held fast to the simple virtues that have sustained them for 75 years. They were fighters who thrived on hardship and found a way to win. Here we go, Bears! Single back offense for the Bears. Kramer back to throw, pumps once now. Rainbow to the left side, going for Conway. Yes, yes. He's gone. He's all NFC Coach of the Year Dave Wanstead has built a playoff toughened winner that plays the game the way it was meant to be. All out, all for one. The Bears had that twitch. And after beating the Giants for their first undefeated preseason in 36 years, they were psyched for the real thing. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! In the opener, they were razor sharp. Kramer takes play action, looking right. Now the middle, throws to get him. Trace Armstrong broke from the gate with a pair of sacks as the Bears didn't allow a touchdown, cruising to their NFL record 35th opening day victory. High formation backfield and off play action back to throw. Kramer pops yes. it over the left side. Getty wide open. Wow, he's going to score. Two Chris Getty touchdowns made it look easy. Perhaps too easy. The Bears lost their next two games and starting quarterback Eric Kramer. But there would be no free fall. They had a safety net. Dave Wanstead, who remind them that they were all in it together and everyone had a vital role to play. We need to do our part to win this game, okay? We need to come up big up front, Al. We need to make the play come up big up front. But the last two series, we have a level up our end of the market. Game plans were user friendly. Player input was welcome. Yeah, you're right. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yes, we got to get Raymond tighter. Many hands made for a lighter load, and everyone had a share in it. Just keep on top of it. Stay on top of it. We're in good shape right there. He's having to pull the ball down. The result was a three-game winning streak. It began on a Sunday night against the Jets as the Bears made the plays when they needed them. Graham Blank up the line to the left. 
Here's the toss to Tillman around the right end. Colonel to the right side of the end zone for the touchdown. Two forced fumbles, four sacks, and Alonzo Spellman's first career interception fueled a 19-7 victory. Then it was back to Soldier Field to take on the four-time AFC champion Buffalo Bills. Each was playing a part. Solid spokes in the wheel. Picks by Donnell Wolford and Jeremy Lincoln set up scores and a key fourth quarter sack by Spellman nailed down the win. A win that featured the NFL's catch of the year. A one-handed masterpiece by Chris Getty. Cook in motion to the right. Walsh back pedal slips. Steps up now, throws the middle of the end zone. Oh! Always built into the game plan was the freedom to seize the moment. Mark Carrier stepped forward this time with some impromptu magic against the Saints. Their third straight win was in their sights, and Eric Kramer's replacement, Steve Walsh, didn't miss. The quarterback Walsh, who's straight back to throw, swings the right side of the end zone. And Kramer, touchdown! Jeff Brown! Oh, what a pass by Steve Walsh! Who were these guys? How had they leaped into first place? They were the resourceful young Bears, and the league was beginning to take notice. High formation, Graham wide to the right side, and here's the handoff to Lewis Tillman yes. on right tackle. Yes. First down. Yes. It was all for one, all the way. The 75th anniversary was a time to celebrate where the Bears are going and where they've been. Throwback jerseys were unveiled and heroes returned. After all, the team George Hallis founded has more Hall of Famers than any other. The diamond anniversary was also the perfect occasion for Michael McCaskey to honor two of Chicago's most cherished jewels. It was ironic that in the midst of a Monday night monsoon, the two jerseys were retired. One worn by a legend who ran like the wind, and another by a raging storm who hit like a lightning bolt. I stand before you with deep humility and pride. I'm proud of Chicago, and I'm proud to tell you that when I played for you, I gave it the very best I could. Gail Sayers and Dick Butkus. No one will ever wear number 40 and number 51 in a Chicago Bears uniform again. Over the years, down Bear Alley, they marched. Numbers and names have changed, but there's always been one constant. A legacy of defense handed down by the monsters of the Midway. The charge was led up front by Carl Simpson, John Theory, Albert Fontenot, Jim Flanagan, Alonzo Spellman, sack leader Trace Armstrong, and Chris Zorich. The tradition of beating on ball carriers was carried on by Vincent Smith and Dante Jones. Number 59, Joe Kane, lived in the backfield and led the team in tackles, while veteran Ron Cox filled in and feasted on the leftover. Number 92, Barry Mentor, is a counted on performer for next year and along with Myron Baker helped make the defense the NFC's toughest inside the 20. Incredibly, Chicago allowed only four touchdowns longer than 20 yards.
Newcomer Marty Carter will ease the loss of Sean Gale and joins Kevin Minifield, Maurice Douglas, Jeremy Lincoln, Mark Carrier, and John Mangum in the secondary. Donnell Wolford continued to be one of the league's premier corners. He led the Bears in interceptions and receivers paid dearly for the rare short ones he allowed. With the defense leading the way, Chicago caught fire once more, launching a new winning streak. It began in Tampa as the Bears rolled 20-6. was the first of four in a row and at the heart of that streak was the special team. Fourth down meant it was time for the Bears big play unit to take center stage. Many gave chase but nearly always the same man got there first. Leading tackler Maurice Douglas. <laughs> Douglas led the charge on a group that blocked five field goals, recovered an onside kick, forced six fumbles, and courtesy of Jeff Graham, returned a punt for a touchdown. Kick, waiting for it, Jeff Graham at the 39. Graham stutter step into the 40, slips it a bit. Oh, the down the right, the way. Go the 40 to the 30, to the, the 20, 15, 10, 5. High step to the end zone. Touchdown! The special teams were special indeed when Chicago took on the Dolphins looking for their second straight win. Big step. Let's go get it, baby. Come on. Just hey. The Bears had never won in Miami, but this time it would be a different kind of game. Very different. Curtis Conway's unlikely touchdown pass set the tone for Chicago's zaniest game of the season. A bizarre contest that tested the will of players, the patience of coaches, and the bounds of belief of all who watch. Intercepted, Donnell Wolford makes the turn in a spin move in the 30. He's to the 35-40, straight ahead, 45-50, cutting left. He's to the 45-40, fumbles the football, it's up to the Late in a tie game, Steve Walsh ate up time and yardage on a clutch drive with one goal in mind. We're going to take it all the way down, full time and kick. Kevin Butler did just that. And from 40 yards out, it was dead solid perfect. But there was more madness. With seven seconds left, Chicago needed one more miracle from their special team. Here's the snap. Placement. Oh, it's blocked, deflected, short into the end zone, and the Bears will win. The Bears will win the football game. It began with a touchdown pass from a wideout and ended with a blocked field goal from a right tackle. All for one yet again. Big Cat Williams was the man of the hour. And in the rain, the Bears were winners for the first time ever in Miami. Got to win, baby. Got to win. Huge win. It's unbelievable. Come down here in Miami and play so well in these conditions. It's a great time. In November, there was a traffic jam of four division contenders, and the Bears and Lions were two of them. Another special teams gem and a perfect pass put Detroit in Chicago's rear view mirror. The wing left side, long set back green, Walsh back to throw, five step drop, rides up, rainbows right side, he's got it! Touchdown! Jeff Graham! Steve Walsh even found the open man on the way out, 
And then he found Jeff Graham a week later against Buddy Ryan's Cardinal. Their fourth win in as many games would mean sole possession of first place in the division. And they caught a break early. To the right side, Walsh takes, fakes the hand off top. Yeah. Yeah. It's on its yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, the big yeah. Yeah. Touchdown! Oh, All right. Right. <laughs> in overtime, the Bears relied on execution, not Lady Luck. The Walsh to Graham connection clicked again, setting the stage for Kevin Butler, who in 1994 drilled his 1,000th career point. Out of the hole to Gardaki. Lewinberg on the snap. Here it is. Pike's been made. Kick by Butler. Sails to the uprights. Yeah. Oh, oh, boy. The Chicago Bears in overtime have defeated the Arizona Cardinals. Dave Wanstead's men roared through November to 8-4. and four. They were alone atop the division. A big reason was an innovative approach on offense. Flea flickers, reverses, and rollouts. Never the same look. A rich blend of run and pass. Thriving in the system were Steve Walsh and Derek Kramer, who together set club records in attempts, completions, yards, and percentage. Reliable Keith Jennings, Ryan Wetnight, and Chris Gedney helped Bear tight ends catch 56 passes for eight scores. But in 1995, the focus will be on wide receivers like free agent Michael Timpson, Greg McMurtry, and Curtis Conway. Kramer pumps left, throws the right side of the end zone. Conway yes. over the shoulder catch, and he's got it to the end zone for the touchdown! Right. Kramer back to throw. Kramer steps up over the middle of the yeah. end zone. Yeah. Jeff Graham had a stellar year catching passes in every game, 68 in all, the most by a Bear in 25 years. Play action back to the throw, Kramer. Wings it deep down the left side. He's got Graham out there, makes the catch. Center Jerry Fontenot was the trigger man, and up front Mark Vortz, Todd Perry, Jay Lewenberg, Troy Odzine, Andy Heck, and James Williams allowed only 25 sacks. An airtight pocket allowed Tom Waddle and the controlled passing game to flourish. Drive blocking sprung the ground attack. Lewis Tillman finished off every run on his way to 899 yards and a team-high seven touchdowns. Versatile Raymond Harris finished second in rushing and third in receiving in a promising rookie season. During the playoff push in a week 14 shootout with the Vikings, Robert Green turned in one of the most electrifying plays of the year. He rushes out over the middle, he goes. He's got Robert Green, tries to yes. slip a defender and does. Yes. Cutting left. Oh, baby. Green go. inside the 30. Ah. Right to the left tackle. 25 20, left sideline. Go the 15 and 10 coming right to the five. Touchdown! What a brilliant run. A great run. Yeah. Man. A rare Kevin Butler miss sent the game into overtime. And in sudden death, sadly, the Bears died fast and hard. Wings to the right side. Caught on the play. Down the right sideline. Chris Carter's going all the way. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Vikings. The game is over. When they lost again in Green Bay, the Bears were steamed. But like an angry volcano, they erupted against the Rams. Victory number nine would mean a winning season and more importantly the playoff spot they had set their sights on from the very beginning. Play action Walsh looks to the end zone, drills the middle. Takes, 
gives Tillman right side. They had done it together, joining once more the ranks of the NFL's elite. Ahead, a wild card rematch with the Vikings, division champions that had beaten them six straight times. It would be a grudge match, all for one. The Bears and their fans were primed for a memorable trip to the Metrodome. This afternoon from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, it's an NFC wildcard playoff contest between the Chicago Bears and the NFC Central Division Minnesota Vikings. And off Tillman yes. off the right side of the end zone and touchdown! Yes, all right. Warren Moon looks it over and he takes it straight back to throw. Moon over the middle through the hands of the inter receiver intercepted by Barry Minter. Minter out of bounds, front 25 near the 29 yard line. Walsh takes bootleg rolling right, throws the right yes. side of the end zone. He's yes. got his man, touchdown! Yes. Here. Down 29 yard line of Minnesota. Give Raymond Harris up the middle. He goes. Harris hey, runs past Del Rio. Please tackle the 15 yard spot. Touchdown, Chicago. Nice job. Nice job. This Bear team believes they can beat the Vikings. They came in here knowing they could win, and they've got all the confidence in the world right now. Central Division champion Minnesota Vikings in what I'd have to say one of the most inspired performances I've seen from a Chicago Bears football team. And I'm the road too. All right, I'm San Francisco. The Bears season ultimately ended two victories short of Super Bowl 29. But what a run it was. In only his second season, Dave Wanstead had convinced them of just how good they can be. In 1995, they'll begin anew, but not unsure and tentative. They approach the coming year as a playoff-tested, united team, inspired, as always, by their loyal fans. With each season, there are new challenges and little certainty. But for the Chicago Bears, one thing is certain. They will face 1995 all together, all out, and all for one. Yeah, one, one.